I took a shower washing every body part with astral soap, including all my major crevices, including in between my toes and in my belly button, which I never did before but sort of enjoyed. I wash my hair with the Don't Formula shampoo and use cream rinse for that just wash shine. <laughs> I can't seem to find my toothbrush, so I'll pick one up when I go out today. Other than that, I'm in good shape. What's going on, everybody? Another bright and sunny day on the outside. Giving God praise every single time, folks. I need to talk to you today about cutting off toxic parents. Yeah. Cutting off toxic parents. I got a passage of scripture for you. Matthew 19, verse 14. And it reads like this. It says, but Jesus said, let the children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And, you know, children are innocent. And, you know, if we don't treat our children with respect and love, you know, we are destroying the next generation. They are our future and we need to treat them right. And we need to treat them like people. You know, but too many parents treat them like, you know, they're not people. They don't have a say and all this other stuff. So we find that Macaulay Culkin, who rose to fame with Home Alone movies. You know, everybody knows the Home Alone movies, right? He sued his parents for uh, emancipation and uh, $17 million. Uh, that's what People Magazine said, you know, when he was just 16 years old. And so uh, he divorced his parents. You know, he claimed that his father, Kid Culkin, mismanaged his earnings and forced him to sleep on the couch. I heard, now this may be wrong, but I heard you like wrestling a lot. Yes, love it. What's your favorite wrestling? Ultimate Warrior. Really? You like yes. Ultimate Warrior? Yes. Now, aren't you mad at him for beating up Hulk Hogan? No, no. <laughs> you weren't a hoaxster? Not at all. I was, but not anymore. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we know how successful this little boy was. But before I continue, I want you to live your best life by applying scripture to your relationships. So this shows how toxic relationships uh, are in the home at times and how some parents can be uh, especially toxic. You know, and I hate to say it, but I find that Mothers can be like that more so than fathers. Now, your experience might be different. And if you have a different experience, let me know. But in my experience, uh, you know, in knowing different families and different people, my mother was my mother was cool. So I don't know what to say, but I've seen a lot of mothers over the years, my friends' mothers and stuff. And man, I tell you, some of them are really toxic. You know what I'm saying? The stuff, anyway, stuff that come out of their mouth and stuff. But but check this out. But, but, but growing up, my mother was always easy to talk to. Uh, to the point that some of my friends would literally come to my house just to talk to my mother. They prefer to talk to my mother than to even try to talk to their own mother or father. Their parents on the whole, they couldn't talk to them. You know, you know what I'm saying? Because there was some sort of toxicity in the home. And they knew that if they approached their parents, you know, openly talk, want to talk openly about a certain subject, it was going to be a no-no. You know, so they were not uh, welcome to express their feelings. And so they came to my house. And I, I've been told, by, you know, I was told at that time by some of my friends, that, man, I like talking to your mom. You know, because they could be open. And my mom was an open person, still is. You know, and so they could express their feelings. Now, I got about, I believe, about eight different things that I want you to look out for when it comes on the toxic parents, right? One of the first things is, is, is that, you know, when I was growing up, I heard <laughs> this saying, right? Kids are to be seen, but not heard. In other words, stay in your little corner, behave nicely, don't embarrass me, and we're good to go. You know, and even if you got issues, keep it to yourself. 
wait till I'm done with whatever I'm doing, then you can come talk to me. So I heard another parent say one time that she told, a matter of fact, it was this week I was talking to this young lady and she said to me straight up, she said, with my kids, I told them, if it's not broken and it's not bleeding, don't bother me. I was like, wow. She said, yeah, I told them straight up, if it's not broken and it's not bleeding, leave me alone. And that's serious. That's serious. And number two, another thing is that kids do not have opinions. There are a lot of parents believe that kids don't have opinions because they're kids. They're not people. So they do not need any special attention for any reason, especially since they're no longer babies. When they're babies, you got to burp them. You got to feed them. You got to clean them. Other than that, after they start walking and talking and be um, able to feed themselves and all the stuff, leave them to themselves. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Don't bother me. You know, you're good. If they're fighting, you let them fight. I'm just saying. You know, and they need to act like adults. So don't come whining and, and you know, and crying like little brats. I don't, want, I don't want none of that. That's the attitude of some parents. And some of you know I'm talking the truth because you can identify with that. That was number two. Number three. Parents have no reason to apologize to their kids whatsoever. Hey, like, like after all, you know, they're, they're, the, they're the parent and those are the kids. So whatever the parent does is fine. So the parents do exactly what they want to do to the kids and they do not apologize to them for any reason. Why, why should I apologize? She's a child or he's a child. I'm the grown up. I'm the adult here. I don't I don't do anything wrong. You know, whatever I do is in their best interest. So guess what? So if 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 their feelings get hurt, big deal. They just need to suck it up and move on. That's what some parents say. And some parents say straight up a child has no right at all. And and especially check this out. Got so, some parents don't give children privacy. Don't lock that door in that house. I take the door off the hinges. Now, some of you know exactly what I'm talking about because you've heard that before. I will take that door off the hinges. Don't you lock that door. It's my house. I pay the rent. I pay the mortgage in here. Don't, don't, uh-uh. Don't turn no key in that door. As a matter of fact, don't even slam that door. I don't care if you're upset. Don't slam that door. Okay? Why do you need privacy? Only a child. So, growing up as a child, you know, many Kids, and you might be able to identify with this too, kid could not close a bedroom door. Okay, privacy was out the window. Uh, that parent was able to push that door, come into that room whenever they feel like, however they feel like, whether you were dressed or undressed, didn't matter. Okay, as far as they're concerned, only adults have privacy. Uh, kids do not. So, that's how a lot of kids get treated. You know, because they only seen as kids and they do not have rights because it's their right to do whatever they want to do the adults I mean the parents they do whatever they want all right so number four now one of the problems I have is that some toxic parents discipline out of anger and out of fear now watch this I could tell you about that okay they will give a child a whooping okay um, <laughs> they'll cut their behind, you know, hey, all the different sayings, okay? Uh, yeah, but they'll give them a whooping with a shoe, with a slipper, with a switch, electrical cord, a piece of wood, a leather strap, whatever comes to hand at that moment, that's what they're going to get. And I've seen kids gotten a whooping to the point of uh, leaving them with welts over their, their bodies. Oh, yeah marks and most of you are going to cry uh, abuse but let me say this growing up in the islands when uh abuse was not that big of a deal or when you didn't hear about abuse that much yeah a lot of kids were getting th those kind of whoopings you hear what i'm telling you at school uh teachers were allowed to bust their kids behind. And if the teachers complain to the parents, when the kids go home, they're going to get another whooping on top of that. But there were a lot of teachers that were abusive. They'll use uh, 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 rulers. 
Uh, use the wooden rulers that got the metal strip and, and, and hit you on the knuckles and stuff with that. They had some, um, they had the, the wooden ruler. I think, I don't remember how many yards that was. And they were using it and busting behind with that. They had some leather straps. I remember now. They had leather, thick leather straps. And when you, when, man, I tell you, you had to put like three, four pants on, three, four shirts. If you know that uh, you're going to get whooping the next day or whatever. And still sometimes that don't work because the things be serious. Okay. Or they send somebody outside on the tree and say, give me a piece of that, 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 um, that branch right there. And then, you know, they got to bring a nice piece. And they'll whoop you with that. Now, some of you may not know nothing about that, but like I said, growing up in the islands, that's what was going on. I don't think they could do that no more. Okay? So whatever the parent would get, they're going to whoop you with it. You know? Some some people got whooped with, 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 with broom handles. And we now know that that stuff was abuse. That's not what you do. That's not how you treat children. You know? And they would not think about what the, because there were no consequences at the time. But these are the things that these parents would do. And because they felt like the kids had no right, they blamed the children for everything. They're never on the children's side. The children are always at fault, no matter what it is. Some parents will take another child's side over their children because they were so hard on their kids. They will not take their kids or even listen to their kids uh, aside in terms of them explaining what happened. No, as far as they're concerned, they were in the wrong. Especially if they were troublemakers at home, they figure, well, if somebody come and tell me that you did something, you did it. I remember that happened to me one time. My father accused me of doing something which I didn't do. And the neighbor down the street said it was me, but it wasn't me. But my sister was there and she knew that it wasn't me who, who did, uh, did the, the stuff that the man was saying that I did. Hey, in the house, I was a troublemaker. Outside, no. No. I was well-behaved outside. I didn't mess around with people. I didn't, I didn't do that. I didn't get myself in trouble. I didn't do none of that outside. At school, I was well-behaved. So, you know, it was surprising to me. It hurt my feelings that my father did not know who his son was. And he accused me of stuff that I did not do. But I thank God that my sister was there. And she was able to vouch for me. And only because my sister was there did I get away with not getting a whooping. Okay? But I saw who did it. And I, and I told my mom. Exactly who did what, what I was accused of, of doing. But I, it wasn't me. See? And another thing that I can't understand about some parents is that they seem to want their children to live in their footsteps. Meaning whatever the parent did not achieve, they want the child to do that. So if the parent wanted to become a doctor, they're going to push that child to become a doctor. And maybe the, the child don't even have the brain, don't have a propensity for, for, for that stuff. Don't have the know-how. Don't have the ability to think critically. Don't have that ability because they're not so inclined. That, that child might be uh, inclined to work with their hands in terms of woodworking, fixing cars, that type of stuff. That's what they, 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 they're, they're prone to, to do because that's their bent then I, 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 you know, I'm trying to explain the best way I can. That's what they're good at. You can tell. Okay, they don't have the ability to sit down and study all this stuff and go to school for nine years and become no doctor. They, they, they don't have what it takes for that. Nonetheless, that's what they want. They want them to become a lawyer. They want them to become an accountant. They want them to, to become um, a veterinarian. They want them. You know, you know what I'm saying. Whatever the parent did not achieve, they're pushing the child to achieve that. And this is a very problematic situation, okay, because in that case, the kids are not given the decision. You know, you don't give them the choice to choose what they want to do. You know, some adults, some parents said the decision has already been made. We make the decision. I know that we got, uh, uh, we've got cultures like that where... The parents make the decision for the kids. And even when they're teenagers, they say, we know what's best for you. And they make the decision as to what you are going to do. You don't have the choice. Even though you might have a desire, you love to do something, you're right. You're not going to do it because they won't allow you. So, I'm telling you, man, toxic parenting comes in so many different ways. You know, and, and number five, here is number five. Here's another problem that some parents, uh, uh, you know, they have. They like to compare their children to others. They're going to ask them, why you can't be like, like, like so-and-so across the street? You know, why you can't be like Susie? Hey, boy, why can't, can't you be like Peter over there? You see how Peter is, is, is well-behaved and he does what his father tells him to do? And he did da 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 And you, Susie, why can't you be like, like, like Jane? I'm telling you. 
They love to compare their children with others. So they're not satisfied with the person that their children are becoming. You know? So even as a child, they're not allowed to become who God has designed them to be. Their parent is, wants, to, wants to lead them in a different direction. Even though they don't have what it takes to be that, that's what they want. Because they, they want to live out that thing that they could not achieve. They couldn't accomplish it. But they're going to force it on the, on the child now to accomplish that. That's number five. And number six, when everything in life is about the parents, about your parents, it's a problem. And you know that. That means they got issues. It's about their parents and their feelings. Okay? You know that the, your parents have issues when everything is about them. No matter what it is, they're always turning back around and it's about them. Some parents, like I said before, do not care about their children's feelings at all. But they still expect them to, to grow up and be well-rounded, okay, and accomplished. How in the world that, that's, that, that's possible? After being treated like, like liabilities, they're not even treated like assets. They're not even being cherished. They're not being nurtured. They're not being loved. They're not even being poured into, you know, and you just let your, your kids grow up like, 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 like weeds, you know. You know, when you leave weeds to grow, they just grow and take over everything. You know, but, but if, if you have something planted, right, and you want it to grow, you got to take the weeds out. You got to, you know, cultivate it, push the, 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 the dirt up around it, water it. Ch children are the same way. You want them to go in a certain direction. You've got to raise them that way. You can't just leave them to themselves and then expect everything going to be fine. You know, you don't treat children as gifts from God, and they are. So that's one of the other problems I have. Number seven. Okay? When a parent keeps score of everything that their children do, you better watch out. You cannot live anything down. You're reminded of everything you have done from the day you were born until the present. See, keeping score is one of the most toxic behaviors that anyone can exhibit. And the parent, especially a parent, will damage their children with this kind of behavior, this type of thinking. And then you only get rewarded for quote-unquote good behavior. And whatever might be going wrong is never addressed. The parents don't address it in a way that the child feels that they could express themselves about the issue and tell them what's going on. So the children are forced to keep their feelings to themselves. Because if not, you got to be careful. Because you can't come and tell them any and anything. Because they're going to punish you for feeling the way you do. It's crazy. So they cannot make their feelings known. And they throw everything in your face. So when you have a parent like that, you're afraid to come and talk to them. You're not going to tell them what's going on. You're going to keep it to yourself. You know? Because they make you, they make you feel like you're at fault in every way possible. Especially when they're going to keep uh, 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 throwing stuff in your face. Everything you've done. So everything you've done is wrong. You've Everything is a mistake that you have made, no matter what it is. It's crazy. All right, number eight. Some parents use guilt to get their way, right? And if that doesn't work, then they withhold affection from their children. You know, again, as a form of, of punishment. They punish their, their, their children because they can't get their own way. At that particular time, they're supposed to be showing a, a, a love and understanding and affection, but no, they're not going to do that, okay? They're going to resort to holding it back. They're not going to give it to them because they treat them that way, figuring, well, what they, it's what they know as tough love, and they don't realize that this so-called tough love don't work all the time. You're killing your children. You're devoiding them of what they need. You're taking away from the child the very thing that they need at that time which is love and affection but hey you know what look, look at it this way a parent can only give to a child what they receive themselves so the same treatment the parent got growing up is the same treatment that the parent now is dishing out to their children because that's the only way they know how to do it yeah it's the only way they know how to do it and so they, they give to their children what they have received from their parents. And it, 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 it's, 
it's heartbreaking because we see what that does. You know, the issues that the child go through as a child, if they don't get counseling and they don't get, um, you know, they don't go see a psychologist or, 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 or something. If they don't get therapy, then they, they grow up maladjusted. And that's why we end up with so many issues in our lives, you know. And and um, as far as the parent is concerned, well, I did my best. You know, I did what I had to do. And they won't apologize for it. They won't look back and say, man, I really messed my children up, you know. Because I was messed up in the head also. This is how I was brought up. And it messed me up. And I didn't realize it messed me up that badly. And I'm doing the same thing to my children. Oh, no. They're going to find every excuse in the book. They won't apologize. Say, you know, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry for, 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 for what I did. I did not realize what I was doing. I did not realize it would affect you this way. No, they won't. So toxic parenting is the cause of a lot of things that we go through in our lives. And that's why so many of us are not well adjusted in society. And like I said just now, that's why we have many problems in our relationships. Because we weren't brought up the right way. Okay, When a child misbehaves, he or she is looking for some attention. They're looking for something. You got to figure out what the problem is. But unfortunately, some parents, instead of sitting down and finding out what's going on with their kids, they resort to naming, blaming, and shaming. That's what they know. So they blame the child for everything. They're shaming them. They're calling them names. <sighs> See, not recognizing that there's a problem that needs to be addressed. Because their they, they, they parent did the same thing to them. And if possible, correct that problem. Fix the issue. Nah. Uh -uh. They, got a, they got just one way of looking at things. And that I'm the parent, you're the child, whatever I, I say goes, whatever I do, that's fine. Because I'm the parent, I can do whatever I want. Um, so, but cutting off your toxic parents sometimes can uh, become the only solution to the problem. Just like Macaulay did. He had to cut his toxic parents off. Because they were destroying him. And they did destroy him. Because he stopped acting. It's the only solution at times for an ongoing problem. Now, a lot of people don't want to hear that. But it's a fact. These parents will mess you up and have you walking in their shoes. And you're doing the very same thing to your kids that your parents did to you. And like I said, unfortunately, especially the mothers. A lot of times the fathers, they, they, you know, some fathers, yes. But not a lot of them are like that. A lot of them are cool. A lot of them will listen, you know. A lot of them will discipline you when, when they have to. Uh, but too many fathers are non-existent. They, they're gone. So the mother's in the house. So, and sometimes out of frustration is why you get treated the way you do. So, you know, cutting off your parents. Toxic parents. Because if you want to remain mentally healthy and stable and stress-free, something you got to do it. Because I mess up your kids too. They will mess up their grandkids. I'm telling you. You got to cut them off. The best way to honor your parents, your toxic parents at times, again, is to cut them off and move far away from their toxicity. And that's the only way you're going to have peace. In your mind. And they will drive you crazy. And they will keep you uh, just going around in circles. Because of their toxicity and their stress that they're trying to put on you. Now, some time ago, right, I made a video about toxic relationships. So if you haven't seen that one, I want you to go ahead and check that video out. Okay? Toxic relationships. Um, let me thank you for, for watching this video. What I'd like you to do is like the video. Leave your comments and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. My name is William Nelson Ryan, and I will see you in my next video. God bless you, and take care. Thank you.